After Australia's Black Saturday bushfires, authorities sensibly granted immediate approval for relocatables as temporary accommodation for up to 18 months. This proven bureaucracy bulldozing approach shows just what can be achieved when the powers that be demonstrate leadership in those crisis situations for which the spin lift gear has been designed. What do you get when you take a man who loves geometry and strives for inner peace and put him in the building game? The answer is someone who wants to look for a harmonious, natural and peaceful way to make lots of noise and create lots of commotion. And that is the paradox of Brian Forbes. <laughs> I saw a very primitive yurt at an um, uh, alternative festival in New Zealand in about 75. There's a lovely ambience within them and also they maximise the use of space. They're terrifically strong, they're ideal for cyclone areas. I've had a lot of difficult sites to work on, steep. Scaffolding is quite an expense, it's also more dangerous working at height. So I was looking around for ways to make it easier. So to take us into the wonderful world of yurts, please welcome Brian Forbes. So Brian, yurts, you know, like as everyone knows, are traditional round <laughs> Mongolian um, travelling tents, but the yurts that you build are permanent structures, is that correct? That's correct. And over the 25 years you've been building them, you've seen the need for something that can be assembled more easily even on hilly grounds. That's correct. And that takes us to your wonderful spin lift. Now, the first thing I notice is, of course, there is no scaffolding. By having the merry-go-round chassis there, everything can be done off the high ground. So these two blokes here. Now, is it two blokes? Can two blokes build a yurt? Uh, two men can lift the floor panels. Um, I have done it with two men. Three men's better. Now, they don't have to be builders, are they? Do they? Uh, no. Well, the beauty about this chassis is it eliminates the need for an understanding of geometry. So, basically, they put it in. Everything fits in its place. You, it's so geometrically perfect you almost can't stuff it up. You can't put it, do it wrong. So it, it's actually a template for a building. It's almost like you're laying the foundations before it's on the ground, is that right? Exactly. Shall we have a look at the how it actually works? Certainly. So basically it is like a Lazy Susan production line. In fact, you could say you are the Henry Ford of the yurts. <laughs> <laughs> it brings the production line to the building site. And because everything kind of fits in its own place, it's almost yurt building for dummies. That's correct. <laughs> right, and as you can see, with two storeys, that's the other advantage to the yurt lift. Right, now your model's progressed. Here's one we prepared earlier. It now has <laughs> two floors. So basically, tell me what happens here. You kind of build the first floor, you build the second floor first. Is that sort that's of how right. it works? That's right. You put the ground floor on the chassis first, then you put a, another floor directly on that, and then you put your walls on, working off the um, platform there, rotating it as you go. And then there is a uh, machine which rotates on the uh, middle axis, which lifts up each roof panel. Can you panels. show us how that goes? Can you lift it up for us? Certainly. Fantastic. Oh, oh nice. That would be good in a plug. <laughs> yeah. huh? so uh. Everything goes up, and then how does the, the bottom one come down again? We insert these pins, which are... Uh, hold the floor, the upper floor to level. So they go through holes there. So two floors go up and only one comes down. That's correct. And this top, this top one's all built and finished. Yes. Cool. And then we lower the hydraulics. Nice. Uh. <laughs> now, if I keep the, uh, the spin lift underneath my house, does that mean I can now have a rotating yurt house? Uh, you can um, make them rotate, and, and I have covered that in my patent for a, on a permanent basis, but the main reason for the spin lift chassis is ease of construction. Yeah. Right. But if I wanted a house that tracked the sun or even anti-tracked the sun so that it stayed out of the sun, I could actually do that with Certainly, this. you could. You'd have to have your sewerage in a sleeve, and you'd have to have loops of cable for your services and water. But mostly <laughs> you remove the spin lift once the yurt is built. Is That's that correct. correct. It's I could machine. have a spinning house. Yeah, you could have a spinning house. <laughs> The key to the advantage of yurts is their simplicity. Made up of only three panel shapes, economical volume production using simple jigs is straightforward. The spin lift chassis extends this simplicity to the erection of yurt panels by unskilled workers, for instance volunteers assisting after a flood or earthquake. Yurts are resource efficient, eco-friendly and very versatile accommodation machines. 
A two-story unit yields four motel units, or two two-bedroom units, or a comfortable three-bedroom, two-bathroom home. Also, the nine-metre diameter core unit can be quadrupled in size by adding a concentric circle of wing rooms to form a multi-unit complex divided like a pizza. Units are extremely strong cyclone and earthquake resistant structures and can be built either permanently fixed or relocatable on telescopic legs. Here's the central mast which acts as the axle for the merry-go-round and at the base of the mast is three cams which can be adjusted to um, level and uh, ensure the barrel which fits over that runs true and plumb. Here we go, we're now fitting the barrel over the mast. And it has a central keeper, square keeper, which slots over that tow ball. And it slides down and fits over the cams, which are adjusted to make it run true. There we go, we've got the central core rotating. We've now fixed the six spokes and the ties, and here's the end cap which is an adjustable telescopic end with a push bolt which adds tension to the ring beam. Now we're fitting the ring beam. And here's a view of the bobcat. The one segment has been removed to facilitate access for the bobcat and he's just moving around. There we have the chassis on a sloping site, another view from underneath, with an outrigger arm for wings. We're now fitting floor panels to the central 12-sided shoe with a nose bolt, and here's a bolt being turned around, pressing against the toe ball to lift it free of the skids so that there's minimal friction so it can be turned. Standing walls. Here we have the roof panel lifter, which rotates and lifts with the chain block. And there we're setting up a pole prior to concreting. And there's the lifted yurt. We're now lowering the chassis, having done the lift. This is a view of the support pole with the clamp. And then right up the joint section to the tie at the roof level. It's tied right around like a barrel.